good afternoon, um, everybody. Um, this is um, turning into something that is slightly different to the original intention. Um, but um, the the focus of this is is the bus back better national bus strategy for England. Um, we are recording this. Um, originally, it was for purely administrative purposes to to make sure we'd got your thoughts collated and uh, and captured. Um, but um, I think the first bit we probably need to um, make available. So originally this was advertised as a uh, Arctic members uh, event to understand um, what support and advice you need as members from us to help you uh, implement the strategy. Um, it's got a bit of a wider attendance than that. Um, and it's also sort of from the conversations over the last week or so become clear that actually the rather than just going and what support do you want um i actually need to run through some of the things that are in the strategy and what the strategy is about um because um not everybody is uh, is quite on the same page and the same level with it so um I am going to um, do a quick run through of some of the key points from a public transport information perspective, given that's the focus of, of Arctic. Um, there's plenty of stuff in the strategy, for example, on ticketing, but I'm barely going to touch on that. Um, it's all going to be focused on the public transport information stuff. Um, I'm going to remind you of what's currently available from Artig that we think will help you um, with the strategy. Um, but for the bulk of the time, um, I actually want to have this as a, as a debate and a discussion. What support are you needing? What do you think you might need? Where do you need help? Um, and what Arctic can do and, and perhaps what conversations we need to be having with other groups to uh, to, to get some mutual assistance and, and support going to, to be able to provide you with the full um, support that you need. So um, the there's a number of um, key things in the strategy. Um, that I want to pick up on first. The first sort of bits are the dates. Some of these are really quite scary. Um, for those of you that joined um, uh, earlier, me and John were having a chat about um, the support and the time scales. Um, so by June, um, authorities are gonna have to commit to enhanced partnerships or franchising Fortunately, there's an admission that actually you can start off with partnerships and, and end up with franchising. Um, but um, if you think about the time scales between now and June, um, we're now in PERDA. Um, so we're in the run up to the May local elections. You can't make any political um, announcements um, or any announcements that that might have a political influence or political aspects to it. Bus services certainly are political. Um, so there'll be new councils elected in uh, the beginning of May. Um, they will then take a few weeks to sort themselves out and agree who's going to be, for example, the transport lead. Um, and um, the first council meetings are likely to be in June. Or well, the first ones that are going to make anything um, other than um, political uh, decisions. Um, and so at that first meeting, there's going to have to be papers from officers that are going, um, we're going to commit to enhanced partnerships. So that's going to be an interesting challenge um, because uh, that short circuits a lot of the traditional 
um, consultation and political um, perspectives on uh, what would normally happen. Um, but that's really important to get that in place because the COVID bus service support grant that's paying for the bus services at the moment um, is dependent on that commitment. So if authorities don't do it, if they follow through with what's in the strategy, that money will um, stop or will be harder, at least for operators to get because they'll have to um, go to the DFT and go, my local authorities failing to do what it should do uh, give me the money anyway. Um, so uh, so that's quite challenging. Then by October, going to have to have in place bus service improvement plans. Um, typically, these would take 12 months plus to develop and put into place. Um, the guidance to support what the DFT expects to be in those improvement plans isn't available yet. Um, and by the sounds of it, won't be available for a couple of months. So um, there's going to be some challenges there and a lot of late nights at the last minute with uh, authorities and bus operators sitting down to agree what's going to be in those. Um, and that's one of the fundamental things about the strategy. It's, it's getting bus operators and local authorities to sit down together and talk constructively and identify what they're going to be doing. Um, and, and that takes time, that takes facilitation and uh, an effort. Uh, so October is extremely tight. Um, and then by April, everybody's going to have to have signed on the dotted line um, and starting to deliver um, enhanced partnerships. So um, uh, again, I mean, that's that's really quite tight time scales. Um, it's good to have time scales because typically these things drag on and people try and kick decisions down the uh, you know down the road. But um, uh, this is going to focus people's minds. Um, so those are the key time scales and bits in the strategy about partnerships. There is also, it has to be said, a Welsh strategy available um, that was released um, in the days uh, after the English strategy. Um, we'll pick up on that later because uh, some of you will undoubtedly be involved in, in Wales. Um, so there's a number of key things that as people that are interested in in Arctic or public transport information um, you need to to be paying heed to in the strategy so um, the first bit is bus priority there's the strategy throughout keeps talking about bus reliability and punctuality and the need to improve that the need for authorities to be doing things to promote that um, be that um, putting in place bus lanes um, and it does encourage that. Um, it also says some interesting things um, in there like um, the government doesn't support electric vehicles also being able to use bus lanes because it will dilute the impact um, which uh, I think most of the public transport community will be pleased to see um but it really does push bus reliability it it suggests that people implement ambitious and that's their word bus priority schemes um so that's exciting to see um but these things also have to complement walking and cycling which has also got separate strategies and funding pots to go alongside so one of the challenges for authorities is is how do you deliver on all of these different strategies in, and, and get a cohesive uh, implementation. Um, but um, from a practical point of view, um, the strategy talks about putting in place traffic management that benefits buses. So um, that's a policy shift for some authorities um, who currently either don't have a 
uh, a policy on bus priority and whether buses have greater priority than, than other forms of uh, transport or not. Um, but they're going to have to uh, jump off that sort of um, fence and, and not say anything and put in place stuff that benefits buses. Um, it talks in a number of places about traffic signal priority because it recognises that you can't have bus lanes everywhere and that you might need to be doing something other than that. Um, and it also talks about bus gates. So things that... Um, from an Arctic perspective, we've been engaged in and involved in for uh, many years um, and have a load of support material um, to, uh, to help with. Um, so um, it also talks about the need for high quality information, um, not just information, but high quality. Um, it talks about the need to have um, bus stops that show accurate information. Um, and it does specifically talk about paper, um, paper timetables, both at stops and also for um, people to, to take away. Things that a lot of authorities have sort of pulled back from um, as austerity has sort of um, rolled on um, over the last few years. Um, it wants to see consistent service line numbering, um, which um, means the um, authorities are going to have to sit down with operators and, and agree um, to the, the numbering and, and, and the routing and things like that. So you don't have um, the same line numbers that cross or, or operate in different areas to help clarify customer um, information. Um, quite a challenging one, I think, is that um, places are going to need to have maps that show all local bus services. I've, I've spent some time trying to work out where the gotcha is in this because it says every town, city and rural area. I'm trying to work out where it doesn't need to have it because it feels like they've worded it quite um cleverly but it might just be me being a cynic um so um maps um those of us that have been involved in public transport information for a while know that um a lot of people like them but not everybody understands them so um there's going to be some interesting challenges there um consistent bus stop names that are used um not only by the authority, but also consistently by bus operators. Um, so that feeds into some of the stuff that the Department of Transport's been doing with um, NAPTAN over the last few months. Um, and the need to, again, sit down with bus operators and agree things. There's a bit of a consistent theme there. Um, it wants to see local branding rather than operator banding of networks. Um, but it doesn't want to see um, existing success stories like the Transdev Service 36 uh, around Leeds um, sort of disappear. Um, so um, you know, promoting a coherent public transport service rather than lots of hodgepodge brands that don't fit together. Um, it wants to see minimised timetable changes. A lot of areas have been doing this for many years now, but you know, coordinating timetable updates and changes to you know, three, four times a year. Um, and um, it also wants to see heavy promotion and marketing to non-users. Um, so this plays into the green agenda that the government are getting increasingly behind. Um, it's all very well getting existing users back onto public transport post COVID, but it wants to see um, non-users um, using it and, and patronage increasing. So promotion and marketing is going to play a big, a big role there. Um, accessibility comes into the strategy. 
So um, some interesting wording about inclusive by design for everything from bus stops through to, to buses and information. Um, so a bit of a mind shift. Um, behind the scenes, the, the DFT are, are shifting a lot of their thinking um, about accessibility, particularly for public transport. So for many years, it's all been about um, making vehicles accessible to wheelchairs. Um, but actually, they're, they're shifting to let's make things accessible to everybody. Wheelchairs is a good proxy because if you can get onto a bus and, and navigate things in a wheelchair, you can probably uh, navigate everything um, with most other disabilities. Um, but um, cognitive um, challenges and things like that, particularly with information, going to need to be considered. Um, it wants to see accessible audio visual information um, at stop and on bus um, and um, apps and journey planners um, being able to provide accessible planning, something that I've not seen really since the Olympics in London um, when a lot of the current accessible information about um, stops and, and stations was, was captured. Um, so th there's a whole data capture and, and management bit of work around that. Um, and that's going to take a quite a while, I suspect, to get fully implemented. Um, it also talks on bus about hearing loops. Um, for those of you that have been on some of the Arctic calls over the last few months, something I've been picking up on. You, know, you put into place a plastic barrier between a driver and a passenger. Um, how do people um, hear properly um, if you've got a hearing problem? So hearing loops, when it's talking about that, means two things. One, the driver to boarding passenger interaction but then also uh, loops in the passenger seating areas for announcements and things. Um, so there's some interesting uh, retrofitting challenges to do there to make sure that interference isn't happening and, and that sort of thing. Um, not really accessibility, but we're talking about vehicles. So Wi-Fi and, and charging um, is going to be expected to be implemented as part of the accessible high quality vehicles that they're wanting to see. Um, in the strategy, there is reference to the It's Everyone's Journey program that they launched nearly 18 months ago now. Um, Arteg, if you remember, um, is the is, 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 has got um, uh, a grant from the DFT for small operators to help them adopt audio visual announcements on bus. Um, that hasn't the competition for that hasn't been run yet because we had to put it on hold with COVID because bus operators were trying to work out whether they were going to be able to run a bus tomorrow rather than um, actually you know what bit of tech and kit and processes do I need to put in place uh, to to get audio visual announcements on my vehicles. So that's been on hold, but the strategy puts another one and a half million in the, into that pot. So um, that small operator grant now stands at three and a half million um, for introducing audio visual. So displays and audio systems on bus, a um, bit like you would see in London that um, tell you what the next bus stop is um, and route um, and uh, line number information and, and information about diversions. Um, so, um, as I say, we'll be launching that scheme uh, in a few months and, and small operators will be able to uh, to apply for that. Um, and um, 
The strategy touches on registration process um, and it wants to see that changed to be optimised for passenger information. Um, so things like split registrations and, and things like that um, sound like they're, they're getting out of the window and a registration's actually going to provide information about where the bus goes to and from and when it's going to run, um, which will help produce uh, the high quality information more easily. Um, it does talk about integration um, between buses. Um, so, you know, going back to the whole coordination of lines um, and things like that, but also between modes. Um, it has a particular focus on rail um, rather than, um, you know, cycling and walking and things like that, but that's largely because of the structure of the DFT. Um, so it talks about rail station hubs and integrated ticketing, um, both between operators and between bus and rail, um, rather than going the full Mars type thing of, you know, buy a ticket and use it on the scooter as well. Um, but, uh, but that's where local implementations could be um, uh, useful. So that's the strategy um and what it says about information and and uh things that we might be interested in from an arctic point of view um between the launch of that and now um it's also where um touching on the zero emissions bus regional areas scheme a um, bit of a mouthful um so a substantial chunk of money for um zero emission buses um, and there's some things in there that that sort of have a bit more detail on the um, on the accessible information expectations so buses supplied with this funding um, are going to have to have the audio visual information um, equipment in them um, and it says what's going to be expected to be um, provided in terms of um, identifying the route, announcing each stop and the diversion stuff. Um, and it also picks up the, um, the induction loop um, issue as well. Um, and going forward, any vehicle that has got government funding support um, is going to have to meet these standards. So if you're a supplier on this call, um, there's going to be plenty of opportunity for uh, retrofitting and new fitting of, of, of audio visual kit on vehicle. Um, I also said I'd pick up on the Welsh strategy. Um, so that is uh, got a five year horizon. Um, it's quite detailed but it's uh, it's quite high level sorry um but it's got some action plan items in it rather than just being pure strategy so yes it talks about um quality reliable punctual bus services a bit like the english one um it specifically addresses the need to to deal with congestion hotspots um and investment in bus stations and stops those of you who have been to Wales uh, in the last few years will have noticed that often uh, they're in a much poorer condition than uh, than they are in England. Um, and it also talks about the accessible infrastructure and the need to uh, speed up journeys and improve the passenger experience. Um, and interesting, it also talks about the need to train drivers. Um, that's bus drivers, not Choo choo train drivers, um, so to train them in in customer service and and uh, and inclusion. Um, so um, that's what's in the strategy. Has anybody got any questions on what's in the strategy? Before I start to pick up on uh, on what we've already got available. That might help. We've got a number of um, things already available, um, 
that we think will help you implement um, the strategy um, and, or some of the, the, the public transport elements of it, information elements. So we've got stuff on traffic light priority um, from uh, you know the the technical different standards to the the latest one on uh, on trigger position files um, and how to create those in a in a shareable way. Um, there's a load of stuff um, on information presentation that we've got. Um, so stuff on you know how to use make sure you're using consistent language on on customer outputs, um, common interface specifications, um, all the way through to things that we did last year, for example, on vehicle occupancy data, how to move that data around, um, as well as how do you make information uh, as inclusive and accessible as, as possible. Um, that's all very well for stuff that's going right when things go wrong. Um, we've got a series of stuff um, on managing disruptions um, and how to do that using Siri SX. Um, it's worth pointing out at this point that um, the Transport for North work that they were doing on the disruption hub um, is being picked up um, by uh, the Department of Transport. So uh, we can expect that to be going national, I guess. Uh, in the next few months, um, and so um, we can expect some more um, inquiries and, and, and effort needed on, on some of the Siri SX stuff. Um, there are a couple of things that we've got that we know need updating um, in light of the strategy, um, so uh, a document from 10 years ago or so on, on um, effectively the business case. So um, approaches to using RTI to achieve traffic light priority um, and um, the, the latest iteration of, of the inclusive passenger information, whilst it was only three years ago, um, in light of the on vehicle side of things, probably needs to be updating. Um, and um, we also have got stuff in the business plan that we'd already identified that needed um, to be created. So um, traffic light priority, where has it worked well? Um, what are some case studies? So you can go away and talk to those authorities um, or operators to, to help learn from their experiences. Um, and um, given that it's encouraging um, information on street, um, how do you go about buying a real-time system if you've not got one, or how do you go about replacing and updating it if you've got one? Um, so that's the stuff that we've got already and the stuff that um, needs updating and we're going to be producing. Um, but I know that... Um, there's potentially big gaps in the support that you need um, when you're trying to write your partnership agreements or trying to help authorities and operators put in place the technology needed to support the, uh, the strategy. So um, I want to um, open it up now for really understanding what you want and think you need from Artig to help you. Um, otherwise, stuff that we produce may or may not be useful for you. Um, and we actually want to do things that are going to support you. If you want to get in touch with me to talk about um, things that you might want, help with uh, or advice on um, but I wanted to uh, to ask in this uh, more public forum then um, please feel free to uh, to get in contact 
um, and uh, and we can have a chat um, outside of this forum. Okay, in which case, um, if there's nothing else that anybody wants to um, ask or talk about, then thank you for your time this afternoon. <laughs>